the item there says comment. Yes. Yeah, you, you can put a comment, but I wouldn't do it unless you've got plenty of time on it. Except there's, there's a couple questions that I think everybody ought to make comments on. But Look, is it the same like Mark? If you, if you don't want to put anything on Mark, like you want to put in comments? Yeah, there's the only, only views that you have. Is when you hit that go-to button, you, you have four choices, and it's all, which is where you're at to begin with, or answered, unanswered, or marked. So really, there's three categories that you can navigate for the grouping or the clumping part. Now, I don't know if there's a, I mean, when you comment, there's probably something on the bottom that shows that you made a comment again, I mean, come back through, but I don't, I don't know that you can, you might be able to use that kind of for your, you're talking about for like your math problems to, to mark them like that, not put anything in the comments, except maybe a comma or something. You can mark everything that you mark will go on to the bundle. But yeah. if you want to categorize them even more, Use the comment button. To, just put a decimal or something in there, or a period or something, just to mark it. Hmm. It's not a bad. If, if it shows you that you made a comment on it, then I guess that'd be like if it lights up at the top or has a different color. So like you said, uh, if it's an answer and you answer it, and mm -hmm. you want to go back, it will go to the mark. Yeah. So it will join the mark. That, after you're done with that, that first group that you go to and unanswered, make sure you go back. The next one you're going to look at are the ones that you marked and answered. And the rest of the time you have on the test, spend it there. Don't ever go back to the first category ever again. Because if you have 9% good guess at it, leave it alone. I mean, you really, don't waste your time on it unless you get two hours left. You know, that's a different story. But uh, the unanswered first, the ones that are uh, answered and marked next. But when you're in that second category, make sure you unmark them. <laughs> after you've done with them, because if you don't, you'll see them again and again and again in that middle category. So when you're in that kind of that third stage, so to speak, and in the middle of that, that marked and answered category, if you change your answer or you or decide your answer is good one way or the other, unmark it before you hit next. That way it falls out and you won't see it again. And you kind of whittle, whittle them down that group, kind of like you're uh, cutting down a, 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 a shape or like a, a totem pole or something. Okay. Last thing we have to do is I want to do uh, ranges tonight, because ranges suck. And I want you to go home with a, uh, a headache. So we're going to spend the last few uh, e uh, hours here with race uh, with uh, ranges. And I'm hoping that what's going to happen is you're going to sleep on it tonight, and then it'll dawn on you about three o'clock in the morning what we're talking about. And so tomorrow you'll come in, and we'll do them again, and they'll just uh, they'll jump out of the page at you. We're on page 66, it's actually the intent was to put it on page 666. They just ran out of ink, so they stuck it in the number kind of fit. You guys don't laugh at any. I mean, I know they're bad jokes, but I mean, come on. All right, so arguably the most controversial table in the whole book. It's not, in my opinion, it's not that difficult, but because of the way it's laid out, it, it's, it, it's prone for a lot of confusion. And so the, 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 to begin with, the table's got three columns, and all three of those columns, the first two, A and B, are one kind. The third column's night and day different animals. Not even the same number of values uh, on page 66. So uh, column A and column B, they, you put a decimal in front of those or put a percentage at the end of them one way or the other. Those are multipliers just like you've seen in step one of your, or step two and step uh, three of your capacity tables, your other uh, appliance tables that we looked at, they're, they're multipliers. You've got to pull out your calculator and you've got to punch in a bunch of name plates in here and then you've got to take that multiplier based on how many ranges you have in that category. Okay? Now, let's just say that, that you had a couple of ranges that were, you know, 3,500 watt ranges. So the very first thing you ask yourself, and this is step number one with any range question, is what column does this range fall under? Okay. So two ranges that were 3,500 or 3,500 uh, 3, watts. If you look under column A, column A says less than three and a half kW, which means that that's all the way to 3499.49. Because that's what's less than, you know, 3,500. So 3,500 is actually where B starts. So two 3,500s would actually be B calculation or B column uh, ranges. So two 3,500s then, you take your 3,500, which is two nameplates, you double that since you got two ranges, so you get 7,000 total nameplate watts there. Two ranges under column B would give you a 65% derating value. So you take that 7,000, which is the nameplate rating, you add it up times point. 6.5, and so you're looking at 9.65. You're looking at a number that's 45.50. Now, what's what, what's you need to bear in mind about this this table is this table is not anything other than a demand 
on a set of appliances for your panel on the outside of the house. That's all it is. In other words, when we're saying that we've got a 4550 demand, uh, uh, demand load, 4550 means that when I'm over here calculating out my, my sheet of paper for all the loads that I'm putting out on my service, on the side of my service, I'm putting this number right there on my tally sheet. Okay? Now, that number out of the 77,000, this being, of course, your connected loader, your nameplate, when you look at it, and 65% because there's two of them, so there's two of them at 3,500. So keeping that in mind will help you when we start. The second thing is you notice that B says that it's 3,500 through 8 and 3 quarters, which means that it ends up with both the start and the end of, of their respective columns. So it's kind of got a double piece there. But the 87, 50 actually is the last size for column B, but it's inside column B. So 8750 would be a column B range. And then, you know, column A, we treat it the same way. It's just if you had two of them there, we'd take, you know, whatever their nameplates add them up, take that multiplier, put on however many we had. And then if I mix them together, I still split them, put them in their separate groups, <coughs> apply them however many I have in that group, and then add the total demand load together. So, for example, these two ranges under column B, calculated just like that. If I had two ranges over here that were 3,000 watts each, then I'd do two of them at 3,000, which is a total of 6,000. Again, I'm going to the nameplate add. But then two ranges under column A are what? 75? 75%? So 75% of 6,000 is? How much? 4,500. That's funny, I'm pretty, pretty close to the same number, right? So if I mix them and I've got a 35 on a test question and 3,000, 35 to 3,000, I've got a mix of both groups here. Well, I'm just going to split them into their respective groups and do the same exact thing I just did. Out of four total ranges, two of them fall under column A, two of them fall under column B. When I'm done, I just add that and that together, so I have you know 90, uh, 50 okay, or watts for my service on the outside for that group. Okay, so there's nothing magic about mixing them up. You just separate them out. However, you got in that group, you do it under A and do the other one under column uh, B, and you're good to go. So you just tackled some of the harder stuff to deal with on this table and that's been painful so far, right? Okay. Column C is another animal altogether. It really ought to be its own table because it doesn't make much sense to, to stop a table at 12kW when your average, you know, a GE profile that the, the cheapest uh, contractor, you know, buys as a, as a bulk buy are 11.5kW already by themselves. You can imagine if that's the cheaper ones, most of the ranges out there in any kind of spec home are going to be bigger than 12kW, so it never made any sense to me to stop it there. But, but column C is a number that's already had this math right here done for you. So column C is just basically saying that if you start with this, don't worry about this part, we've got it taken care of. You just put that number right there down because that's what that number is. So if you look at one range then, as long as you fall above 8750 and don't go past 12, whatever that number is, that's the math already done. No calculator needed. So a 10kW, one single 10kW, 8,000 watts. No math. 11kW, one by itself, 8kW. No matter. If I had two of them, if I had a 9 and an 8, to, excuse me, a 9 and an 11 together, I've got 11 kW for those two. I don't have to add nothing together. I don't have to worry about anything other than the fact that I've got two ranges in that zone. Whatever that number is, I'm, I'm good with it. So in that respect, column C is really easy to use. Just make sure you put a watt next to that so you know that it's a, or just draw it out as 8,000, you know, or put 8.0 kW. That way you differentiate it in your mind from the A and B as multipliers. This one's a, a real output number already done for you. Now, wouldn't it be nice if it was that simple, right? Um, let's do, uh, let's do, tell you what, I, there's no easy way to do this. I've never really had it. Um, it's been difficult to kind of to get this thing across to anybody over the years, and, and it, it, it don't feel like y'all are the only group because I'll tell you, even on the, the like the electrical forums out there, the Michael stuff and the electrician talk and stuff like that, this table has been argued back and forth, left and right. Nobody can really kind of agree on a couple of points on it, but they do agree on the fact that this table by itself is a demand table. Note four down at the bottom is the only thing that changes that's a little different. Note 4 says, as a branch circuit allowance for sizing a breaker or a piece of Romex to one single appliance, you can use row 1 for branch circuit calculations as well. So as long as you don't have more than two appliances, you can use this table for both a single range as it applies against the demand on a panel on the outside, 
And that same number, same math you can use for sizing your breaker and your, and your Romex. Okay?